Thanks everyone for joining today or tonight or this morning again, time zones. Uh, so I'm Jerome Pitazzoni. Uh, you might have heard about me uh, as a container enthusiast. Uh, I was one of the first engineers at Docker uh, back in the days. I actually joined Docker before it was Docker in uh, 2011, something like that. Uh, I worked at Docker for quite a while. And after that, uh, I decided to do different things. I did some music, some uh, tinkering. So for instance, I took some time to work on a music instrument using something like that and a Raspberry Pi. But this is fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, what not what I want to talk about tonight. Um, I want to talk about uh, containers and HTTP traffic, no pun intended. Um, so this is what I want to cover tonight. Um, I'm going to give a little refresher about ingress on Kubernetes, like what it is, what it's for. Um, I'm going to talk about TLS and also throw some acronyms around like CSR. I'm going to talk about ACME HTTP 01. Uh, which is something that took me a while to practice in front of the mirror to say it correctly. Uh, I'm also going to talk about CertBot and then see how we can mix all these ingredients like CertBot, let's encrypt uh, traffic as an ingress controller, Cert Manager, uh, to get something that I find really interesting uh, to manage certificates on uh, applications deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, so first, I have like a not so random question for you, my uh, delightful audience. I would like to know how you create and manage your ingress resources. Uh, and so normally now a poll should uh, show up for you. Uh, and so basically, you know, um, it can be either either you don't know exactly what ingresses are and that's fine, or maybe you use YAML, whether it's uh, handwritten or generated by some scripts, uh, or you use the brand new kubectl create ingress command, or maybe you use like some something else um, completely different. I'm pretty curious to get the sense of the audience uh, tonight and actually the, sorry, I need to, sorry, I need to do a little, not so pretty thing because the poll window was hidden behind my slides. All right, well, I see that uh, the vast majority of you uh, are using YAML to create your ingress, um, but there is also a small uh, bunch of folks who are so like my what now, uh, which means that it makes sense for me to explain a little bit what ingresses are about. So ingresses are a way to get HTTP traffic uh, in our Kubernetes cluster. Um, if you have used Kubernetes a little bit, you might know that we have a notion of services. Uh, so services are uh, level four load balancers. So level four as in TCP or UDP. So if you want to connect to, I don't know, like a Postgres or Redis or some, you know, like voice over IP or whatever running on Kubernetes, you're most likely to use a service. Uh, but then we also have this concept of ingress, which is uh, level seven or layer seven, and specifically to manage HTTP. So how, what does that look like exactly? Well, you can have a, a list of rules where you say uh, where you want your uh, HTTP requests to go. So for instance, um, there is that little map here, and I'm actually going to try uh, to demo that. Um, so I have a cluster here. Um, let's check that I'm actually connected to the right node. Yep, that's cool. Um, so I have a Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to um, deploy a few applications right there. Um, and I'm going to create, uh, let's see, a deployment called SkyBlue. Um, and I'm going to use a little uh, demo image uh, called web color. And you're going to see in just a minute uh, what, uh, this, um, what this image is doing. Um, and then let's see what else are we offering here, like hello and bye. Okay, hello and also bye. And then I need to uh, export all that. So expose deployment sky blue dash dash port 8000. 
Um, so, you know, I'm deploying a bunch of apps on Kubernetes. Here, of course, I'm using this little, very silly uh, application of mine, but we could imagine that these are, you know, like a bunch of actual web services. Now, ingresses. Um, ingresses will let me do some kind of uh, um, HTTP URL routing. So I can do kubectl create ingress. I'm going to call that uh, my wonderful ingress. Uh, and then I can give a bunch of rules. And so, for instance, I can say that rainbow.digbot.fun slash blue uh, should go to sky blue. And then I want, I can put multiple rules like that. So I'm going to add some more like rainbow.digbot.fun uh, slash pink is going to go to light pink 8000 and then a couple of more rules. Um, I'm going to put like a, a digbot.fun slash uh, hello dot digbot.fun um, should go to hello. And finally, we're going to send um, rule by digbot.fun uh, to buy on 8,000. Okay. Um, so just to recap, um, see, like I, I kind of define what goes where. Uh, and just so you know, I, I've, I've set up DNS so that everything dot uh, digbot.fun goes to this Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so now, for instance, if I go to hello digbot.fun, I get that. Uh, if I go to, what did I call it, rainbow.digbot.fun uh, slash pink, that goes there. And then um, if I go there. And so basically, um, this gives me a way uh, to map URLs to applications. Uh, so that's that's pretty useful, you know, if you want to host a single page HTML apps or things like that, where instead of a little example like that with like, oh, colors and blue and pink, etc., you might have, uh, for instance, slash API going to your API backend, slash static going to some Nginx server serving static assets, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can kind of aggregate um, all your uh, your APIs and routes uh, using this ingress thing. And here I'm doing some fairly simple, you know, map this URL this way, uh, but we can also do some more advanced things like, you know, Canary, when you send um, a small fraction of the connection somewhere, um, blue-green deployments, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the, that's something, uh, that's the kind of stuff we can do with ingresses on Kubernetes. And here I happen to be using traffic as my ingress controller. The, so the ingress controller is the component that is receiving all my HTTP connections and then sending them to the right place. And here, that's traffic. We could be using another one, but uh, I picked traffic for reasons that I will explain as we, um, as we dig uh, deeper into that. OK. Um, yeah, there is a fairly good question, like, am I using something like external DNS or something like that here to map the domains? How does that work? Um, so I'm doing a little uh, hack here just for this demo where I actually have traffic uh, running with a daemon set. Uh, I happen to have a four nodes cluster uh, and I have traffic running as, as a daemon set so that I have a traffic pod on each node of the cluster. And so on each node of the cluster, I have traffic accepting traffic, uh, or maybe I should say connections on ports 80 and 443 to serve both, both um, HTTP and HTTPS. I have to say that if I have only, you know, like one bad thing to say about traffic is that then I have to be very careful about the words I use because I have to say, oh, we're going to send traffic to traffic. And then since it's pronounced the same way, we have no idea what I'm talking about. So from, from now on, I'm going to be careful and I'm going to try uh, to talk about connections uh, and traffic when I mean the load balancer. All right, so that was a kind of quick little uh, 
you know, catch up on ingress on Kubernetes. So ingress, a ways to dispatch HTTP connections. Awesome. Um, so now let's talk about the wonderful world of TLS uh, and certificates. Um, so TLS, you know, like I'm, I'm sure that most of you know what it's about, but just in case you, you don't, TLS is about the little padlocks that we see here. Uh, here, I, you know, con connection is, is insecure because I'm using plain HTTP. I'm not using TLS. And basically, one of our goals today is going to get that to be secured with a TLS certificate. Uh, I'm not going to give you a long and boring explanation about like, you know, public key cryptography and stuff like that. Um, but just what we need to know is that when I'm going to connect to HTTPS, instead of hitting port 80, I'm going to hit port 443. And then there's going to be some kind of negotiation where basically I'm going to ask the server, hey, who are you? And the server is going to tell me, well, I, I'm server.woot and this is my certificate, which is signed by a CA or certificate authority. So it's a little bit as if the server was showing me its papers to prove, yeah, this is who I am so that I can be sure that I'm really talking to that server and not to some malicious you know, man in the middle impersonator trying to get access to my passwords or whatever. So by the way, um, there is also something called MTLS, like mutual TLS. You might have heard about that in the wonderful world of service meshes and things like that. Uh, when we do MTLS, mutual TLS, not only uh, the, the server shows us um, its ID, but we also identify with the server. And so we could use that uh, in, in lieu of uh, a login and password. In fact, um, if you deploy your Kubernetes cluster with a tool like kubedm, which incidentally is what I did, what I've done here, uh, then you end up with a kube config file. And in that kube config file, uh, we have here a key and certificate that we use as a login and password to identify ourselves with the server, the server here being my Kubernetes API and control plane. All right, so now uh, where do certificates come from? Well, they are not being brought over by magical stocks. Uh, the way it works is that um, you, when you want a certificate, you know, it's like, it's like if I want my ID card or my passport, I go to the whatever the local you know, bureaucracy thing is in your country. Uh, so how does it work with certificates? I generate a key, and so that's going to be my private key. So I, I hold to that and I never give it to anyone. Then I generate the CSR, like a certificate signing request, which is basically like filling a form saying, hey, please, I would like a, you know, a passport or ID card. I would like a certificate uh, and I'm Jerome. And so I show that to the CA uh, and the CA is going to check that I am the right person. You know, if you, if you have ever uh, got like a passport made, they ask you for whatever extra papers to prove that it's really you. Like you, you can't go and ask to have a passport for the name of like Barack Obama, except if you actually are Barack Obama. So same thing with the CAs here, there is some kind of verification going on. And then if everything passes, you get your certificate. Now, um, in the case of like certificates for web servers, so basically what happens is that you say, hey, I want to be, you know, server.woot or awesome.io. And so we have some verification going on um, so, that we, uh, so that we are sure that, yes, uh, you, you are that server and not uh, anything else. Right. Um, so, now let's talk a little bit about this ACME HTTP01. What is that? This is a kind of a, a protocol uh, to automatically obtain certificates. This is how it works. And it, it's been made famous by Let's Encrypt. The way ACME HTTP01 works is that basically I, I ask Let's Encrypt, hey, I would like a server, um, sorry, a certificate for server.woot. 
And let's encrypt is going to be like, well, first you need to prove that you really are server.root, you know, that it's really you. I'm like, well, how do you want me to prove that? And let's encrypt is going to be, well, please put a picture of a cat with a purple bow tie on HTTP server.root slash 42.jpg. I'm like, well, I'm going to prove that I am server.wood by doing what you ask me. So I put a picture of a cat with a purple bow tie on that address. Let's encrypt, gets that URL, checks that it's a picture of a cat with a purple bow tie. And it's like, all right, it's you indeed. So I'm going to give you a certificate. It works exactly like that, except that instead of a picture of a cat with a bow tie, uh, it's just like a kind of random string that you have to put in a specific place, but otherwise it's exactly the way it works. Let's encrypt is going to tell you something like, hey, you need to, you need to put some, uh, some secret uh, number that I just generated, uh, put it on that specific address, and I'm going to curl, well, to, to, to make a request there and check that it's, uh, that it's really you. So that's how it works. Now, where does traffic comes into play here? Well, traffic can automate the whole thing for us. You know, there is like some little magic switch that you enable in traffic. And then when you say, hey, I want TLS, uh, I want HTTPS on my, on my sites and apps, et cetera, it's going to do the whole thing on our behalf. You know, like contact, let's encrypt. Let's encrypt, say, put the picture of the cat with the purple bow tie. Okay, traffic will do it for us. Uh, and like moments later, we have our certificate. Now, this is not exactly what I'm going to show you now because that has been done like 1 million times already. Um, I remember seeing demos of traffic plus let's encrypt. I want to say 2017. I'm not 100% sure, but like quite a while ago. So I want what I want to show tonight is a little plot twist uh, compared to that. I want to add more components uh, in that whole diagram. So at first, when we say, oh, I want to add more components, I want to add more complexity, we can be like, are you sure you want to do that? Um, but I'm going to explain why it's a good thing. Because basically the, the main motivation um, is that if we use traffic to manage our um, certificates, traffic is going to safeguard uh, our keys and certificates. So it's going to hold to these keys and certificates. So when you want to have a highly available deployment, now it, things get a little bit more complex. Um, and so what I want to do here is like, no, I don't want to bother traffic with my keys and certificates. I want to store the keys and certificates uh, in Kubernetes, like through the Kubernetes API. Um, so um, first, I have a little uh, question for you, like out of curiosity. Uh, I wonder, for those of you who work with TLS certs, uh, like how do you obtain uh, these certs at the moment? Like either you don't, or maybe you're already using traffic and let's encrypt, or maybe you're already using traffic and let's encrypt and cert manager, uh, or maybe you use something else. Um, I'm kind of curious. Okay, so I see about like half of you use something else. There is a small minority already using cert manager. So, well, uh, for you, congratulations. You already know most of what I'm going to show you. So you're welcome to help yourself to some uh, refreshments and pizza if you would like. Um, and also like maybe yeah, a quarter of, um, of you who are using traffic plus Let's Encrypt. All right, so first, I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to switch to a different cluster for my next demo. Uh, and I'm going to go to a cluster called elfzip. So I'm going to connect to elfzip.fun. Um, all right. And um, here I'm going to obtain a certificate, uh, kind of the, the old fashioned way. Uh, well, old fashioned, not that old fashioned, but I'm going to use certbot Certbot is a tiny little uh, command line tool just to communicate with Let's Encrypt. Um, so I'm going to, let's see, uh, and now I'm realizing that I don't know if I can actually easily copy paste from that. So, well, I'm, 
uh, let's see let's see how I can do that. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Um, so domain is going to be node one elf zip dot fun. My email address is going to be Jerome Petanzoni at gmail.com. And then I have to type this very long and complicated Docker run command. Um, so uh, basically, I am going to use Docker run uh, to start certbot in a container. Um, and I'm going to expose certbot on port 80 because certbot is the one who's going to do the, the talking with Let's Encrypt. So it needs to be able to receive traffic from Let's Encrypt. So that's why I do this port mapping here. Um, then I'm going to also um, map a volume here uh, slash let's encrypt to slash dc slash let's encrypt uh, what else do we need uh, oh and of course i already screwed up by putting the image name in the wrong place okay there we go third but third but uh, then i'm going to tell third but just get me a search that's what the certainly thing does then use this email address uh, standalone means, uh, you know, like you, you can also use certbot in collaboration with Apache or Nginx on many other web servers. But here I'm like, no, just do your thing. You're on your own, buddy. Um, so don't rely on another web server. And test cert. There we go. All right. So this is going to pull the certbot image and it's going to run it. Then we should see a little dialogue between certbot and let's encrypt all right waiting and there we go yep so uh, that's the dialogue it asked for that certificate uh, and then let's encrypt was like oh yeah prove me that you are node one dot um and then we put up the the challenge the picture of a cat with a purple bow tie uh, and then we wait for let's encrypt to check that and at the end we have our certificates. Uh, what do we do with that now? Uh, well, uh, I can, um, whoops, there we go. Um, I, my certificates are right there. Like specifically, I have like uh, uh, the private key here and the certificate there. And then I can transform these uh, into um, a Kubernetes secret. Uh, which is a Kubernetes object that I will be able to use further down the road. Down the road. All right. So you know that's kind of what things looked like in that in this little demo, except on the real Kubernetes cluster that would never work because my port A would already be taken. You know, I I, I couldn't have let Syncrypt directly talk to cert, but because there would already be something on port A. So how do we solve that? Well. Of course, we're going to use traffic and things are going to look a little bit like that. So on port 80, I already have traffic um, serving connections, like serving HTTP connections. So let's encrypt is going to hit traffic when it looks for the picture of the cat with the purple bow tie. Um, and then traffic will have to send that request to my certbot container. So here, um, you know, like the if I look all the steps or the hoops that my HTTP connections uh, jumps through, uh, we have an ingress rule. Uh, then we go to a service, we go to some endpoints, we go to a pod, we go to the container. Um, and here, if we were so inclined, uh, we could do something like this. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of YAML here. Uh, there we go. So, so I this is a little bit of YAML that will take care of creating an ingress uh, and then a service and then some endpoint. So this is a, in, an ingress that basically tells to traffic, hey, if you get any requests for that well-known SEME challenge. Like if you get any request for pictures of cats with purple bow ties, then you should send that to certbot. And then certbot here, it basically says, oh, just send connections to this IP address on port 8000. And then I can run certbot on 
uh, this IP address and port 8000. Now, this would be a really fun demo if you wanted to do some low level kind of deep dive in Kubernetes services and endpoint and stuff like that. But really, we do not want to do that. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to learn about Kubernetes networking. And if you never did anything with endpoints and you want to you know, have some uh, cool party tricks up your sleeve, I, I recommend it. It's a great experience. Uh, but if you want to deal with certificates, Really, you don't want to write a ton of custom YAML like this. Imagine like if I had to write some YAML like this each time I wanted a certificate and apply that and then have this like Docker run command. That doesn't seem like a very reasonable way to do things. And so that's why we're going to go to our next, you know, like a project, which is Cert Manager. Um, so I took the description of Cert Manager from their website, and then I de-emphasized everything except the keywords. So basically, it provides certificates as a service. Cert Manager is a thing that you install in Kubernetes, uh, and then it gives you a way to obtain certificates. That's that's it. That's the that's the pitch. Um, it can support uh, mechanisms like Let's Encrypt, but also stuff like Vault and a bunch of other things. So it's not just for Let's Encrypt. Uh, and once you have Cert Manager set up on your Kubernetes cluster, you can ve very easily say, hey, Cert Manager, give me a cert. So um, another poll, and you will probably notice that there is some redundancy in my polls. Um, I'm curious to know who's already using Cert Manager. And if you are, uh, is it with Let's Encrypt uh, or with other things? And I see, yeah, it's kind of 50-50 uh, between uh, I'm using it with Let's Encrypt and I'm not using it. And there are a few folks using it with Vault or something else, but like tiny, tiny minority. Um, okay, so uh, what I can do with Cert Manager is that basically I will ask Cert Manager, hey, get me a Cert, please. Uh, and Cert Manager is going to do all that annoying, boring, complicated YAML stuff. Uh, so it's going to make sure that the requests to that well-known ACME challenge URL are sent properly to a cert bot like thing. It's not actually using cert bot, it's using like its own implementation, but it's the same idea. Um, so it, it does all that song and dance for us uh, and, and that's it. Okay, so let's see that in practice. Let's see that in action. Okay, so I'm going to install cert manager and I'm not going to type that URL because that would be ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to uh cert manager install i'm going to look for the url right here um yeah usually i try to be prepared but i had completely overlooked that i wouldn't be able to copy paste from my slides this is a uh, another look it, it won't happen again i promise um okay uh, so boom, boom. all right so this is how we install cert manager uh, you just have to apply one YAML. As you can see, it's a YAML that creates a bunch of things, but it's just one YAML. So it's very straightforward. Um, if you prefer to use something like Helm, they also have Helm charts. So that's, that's also an option. Now we need to configure a uh, cert manager. How do we do that? Well, we need to create um, an issuer. So this is basically a little snippet of configuration uh, for cert manager. Uh, so I just need to update that here to actually put a valid email address. Otherwise, let's encrypt is going to tell me nope. Um, so this is a little bit of configuration for cert manager. And I'm going to apply that, so load that in, into my cert manager. And, uh, and then, and then, and then uh, let's obtain a certificate. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, I'm going to be really fancy right now and I'm going to split my screen in two halves. Um, on top, we are going to check uh, services and ingress and pods. There we go. So at the moment, we have 
almost basically nothing. Uh, now let's try to obtain a certificate here. Um, so I want a certificate for, what's the example that I put here? No, I didn't put the specific name, uh, but basically let's say rainbow.elfzip.fun. Uh, rainbow.elfzip.fun rainbow.elfzip.fun. So you might wonder, hey, why do you have to repeat the same thing three times here? What happened to don't repeat yourself and factoring information, etc.? Well, we have three different things here. This is just the name of that object in Kubernetes. So you could put almost whatever you want here. Then we have the secret name. So to be clear, this is not a name that is secret. It's just the name of the secret. So that means you're going to obtain a certificate. And once you have the certificate, you're going to store it under that name. And then here we have the DNS names. So basically the actual names for which we want the certificate. Um, personally, I like to have things, you know, that are super boring and repetitive, you know, like a, X, 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 Y, 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 et cetera, everything with the same name. But sometimes it can be useful to have different names. You know, maybe DNS names is going to be rainbow.lzip.fun, but the secret name and the metadata name are going to be like website dash prod or something like that to reflect that. Uh, this is for the, the, the for, for our production website. Um, Okay, so now we're going to apply this and basically um, shortly thereafter, Cert Manager is going to pick that up. And you see here it's running a pod with the uh, CMA, CME HTTP solver. Uh, this is the equivalent of Cert bot right here. This is the thing serving pictures of cats with purple bow ties. Um, then we have a corresponding service and we have an ingress as well. So we have all the YAML I was showing you earlier. This is now all in place, except nothing's happening at this point. Nothing's happening at this point. And I'm like, hmm, what up? Well, I can do um, kubectl describe ingress. See that that's the address um, that uh, Let's Encrypt is trying to... Uh, uh, to, to connect to at the moment, uh, like this. And if I try that, I didn't do a curl, it says connection refused. Doesn't work yet. Why? Because I don't have um, an ingress controller running yet. I don't have traffic running on this cluster, at least not yet. So normally, uh, let's encrypt would you know, knock the door on port 80 and traffic would be like, hello, who's this? And let's encrypt would be like, hey, give me that uh, URL here, please. And traffic would then forward that to the right place. But we don't have traffic at the moment, so that doesn't work. Well, we're going to install traffic on the cluster with another little YAML. So just in case you wonder, the YAML that I used here uh, it's just a YAML from the traffic website. Like um, I, I just tweak a couple of things uh, so that it runs on all nodes of the cluster, uh, but very minor. And I'm going to show you more about the configuration um, at the end of the talk. So now we have traffic. So now if I curl this, you know, like I, I you see that I get a response uh, and now we need to wait a little bit because basically, you know, there we go. Uh, Let's Encrypt is just trying and retrying once in a while, but it's not instantaneous. You know, maybe it tries every 10 seconds. So you have to wait for the next time that it tries. Um, and now if everything went right, if I do a kubectl get secrets, yay, now I have this uh, rainbow elf zip dot fun, uh, which is a uh, TLS secret. So now, how do I use that? Well, let's uh, get ourselves some Nginx. Create deploy web with that good old fashioned Nginx. Let's expose that deployment. And uh, then let's create an ingress. Uh, let's say web. And then I'm going to put a rule here to say rainbow.elfzip.fun. 
fun should go to web on port 80 so that I could see the, the welcome to Nginx page. But I'm going to add, I think it's comma TLS equal, and then the name of the secret that, re, that they want to use, lzip.fun. Uh, and that should do the trick. And so now if I go to rainbow.elfzip.fun, so here I get welcome to Nginx, but as you can see here, I have the connection not secure because I'm using HTTP, not HTTPS. Now let's try to connect over TLS and see what happens. And I'm like, hmm, potential security risk ahead. What happens? Like, did something, is there something wrong with our certificate here? Well, if I take a closer look at this, um, show me the cert, um, you can see here staging, let's encrypt. I'm like, oh, right. When I created the cert manager uh, configuration earlier, I told it to use um, let's encrypt staging. So I'm, ge I'm getting like a staging certificate. I want a real certificate, not that fake staging stuff. So I'm going back here. I'm, um, I'm in, I, I need to create a new configuration here. So let's call that, let's encrypt production for the production environment. Use this URL instead. Let's encrypt production. There we go. Let's apply that. And then I'm going to um, edit the certificate here and say, nope, use production, kubectl apply. And then I'm going to you know, watch uh, as things unfold. So you can see the, the challenge solver here. Um, the ingress that's going to be used by cert manager in Let's Encrypt. And hopefully in just a matter of seconds, uh, Let's Encrypt will be happy with my cat with a purple bow tie picture. Um, there we go. And then it's going to update the secret um, that contains the, the certificate, like that thing here, which just updated and traffic will pick that up. And now when I reload, I get a valid certificate here, connection secure, everything is fine. All right, so that was the, 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 the key idea um, that worked, yay. Um, we can even go a little bit farther, but, um, and before going farther, I'm going to quickly check because I see there is a bunch of pretty interesting questions. Um, first, there is a question like, hey, would we use Cert Manager for development without an orchestrator? And I'm like, well, I would say yes and no. Um, you definitely, you could, I mean, on a local machine without, you know, um, inbound internet connection, probably not. If I want to have something using TLS on my local laptop here, and I want you to be able to connect securely, I could use something like ngrok for that, and it would give me uh, an ngrok URL, and you could connect to a machine through that. Um, for development platforms, uh, yes, we would definitely use something like that. Now, if you're running on a single machine, you know, like no orchestration, let's say a single Docker host, um, would I use Cert Manager? Good question. To be honest with you, I have not deployed Cert Manager outside of Kubernetes. And so I, have, I don't know how that would work. Um, but I hope that by the end of the presentation, you can, you can see if it makes sense for you or not. Um, another question is, uh, would, can I use like, you know, wildcard domains like star here? Yes, I can use wildcard domains like, you know, star.helpzip.fun uh, with one little caveat though um, for the certificate. Uh, I have to use a certificate for that exact name. If you want to have a wildcard certificate, uh, we need to, you know, put HTTP or um, ACME HTTP01 away, and we need to use ACME DNS01, uh, which is something, as you might guess from the name, based on DNS. And in that case, the challenge is not put the picture of a cat on that URL. The challenge is 
put that DNS entry in your DNS zone so that I can check that you indeed own that DNS zone. So it's a little bit different. All right. Now, annotations. And that's where, um, that's where I'm getting a little bit excited because it kind of shows how we can compose things together. Uh, let's look at this command line here. And I'm actually not going to run it because, again, I'm sorry, I didn't anticipate that I wouldn't be able to copy paste from that. So I feel a little bit silly now. Um, and I don't want to spend like two minutes typing this, but just, just look at this beautiful command line here. So I'm creating an ingress exactly as we did before, uh, this time for, let's say, yellow.helpzip.fun. Uh, so I say that domain should go to that specific service. I add just like before the TLS equal that thing. Uh, and by the way, that secret doesn't have to exist when I run this. When I run this, secret doesn't exist, no problem. Uh, it's, you know, traffic is just going to wait for the secret to exist. It's no big deal. And then I add this annotation. Uh, annotations, just in case you're not familiar with the concept, annotations are uh, just like the name indicates, it's a little bit of an extra, you know, like a kind of a post-it note that you slap on a Kubernetes object. And here we put an annotation on that ingress to say cert manager cluster issuer equal let's encrypt production. So um, traffic is not going to do anything about that. It's going, it's just like, oh, it's just like yet another annotation. You know, everybody could, can put whatever annotation they want, but cert manager is going to see that annotation on the ingress and it's going to be like, ha ha, you would like to obtain a certificate for this, I got you. I'm going to do the whole, you know, let's encrypt search manager thing, et cetera, for you, create that secret. And so maybe a minute later when the secret exists, traffic notices and is like, okay, now I'm going to enable TLS with that certificate that you just obtained. So you might wonder, okay, that seems very complicated. What's the point? That's the point. Okay, so a thing that I got really excited about pretty often when I was talking about Docker in the early days was this separation of concerns, which is basically you can have something that deals with the logs and something that deals with load balancing and something that deals with, I don't know, metrics and health checks and whatever. And all these things can be independent from each other. And when you change one of these things, you don't have to change everything else. You can change things completely independently. Here, I try to do this kind of... Uh, it's not exactly a dependency graph. It's more like a codependency graph, if I could say. Uh, it kind of shows which components interact together. And so, of course, traffic is going to take care of my Kubernetes ingress resources, but traffic in this big picture has no idea that we have cert manager or let's encrypt or whatever. It's, it's only interacting with ingress resources. Now, if I go to the other side of the table, um, cert manager has no idea that we're using traffic as the ingress controller. Cert manager is only working with our ingress resources and then of course communicating with Let's Encrypt. Now, if I talk about my application, my application has no idea about everything else. I just have an ingress that points to my application, uh, but then everything else is completely independent from that. So that's the thing that I find really interesting and useful is this ability to decouple all these components, you know, like this, this whole thing. If tomorrow I decide that I'm not going to use Let's Encrypt anymore, I'm going to use Vault or whatever, I just have to change a little configuration in Cert Manager and that's it. Everything else uh, will keep running without having to reconfigure anything. That's the part that I find really interesting. And as a little example, um, this is what it will look like uh, when, for instance, this is an excerpt for, from a, one of my scripts to install GitLab. These, these are parameters for a Helm chart. And that's pretty interesting because basically, um, if we didn't have this separation of concerns, 
then when you put the configuration, it would be way more complicated because you would have to say, okay, so I'm going to have ingresses, but those ingresses also need secrets that are going to be obtained by this and that and whatever. Uh, and here, um, all I have to do uh, is that one line here, which is that little annotation thing where I'm basically telling to that Helm shop, hey, just Add that annotation on all your ingresses, will you? And that's enough so that everything else kind of uh, um, falls from that. So that's that's the really cool thing. Um, now I want to go back on a little thing like how did we configure traffic to do that? Well, we did not. When, when I say we did not, I mean I didn't write a configuration file. Um, and that's the part that gets me also pretty excited. This, you know, like these are the common line parameters um, that I gave to traffic. I didn't need to write a config file. I just had to put these common line flags. Um, some of them might actually be default values. I'm not even sure, um, but that, that's it. And for me, getting rid of the configuration is a pretty big deal. You know, like uh, I, I remember uh, there was this really amazing talk from Kelsey Hightower introducing like no code, like programming with no code to kind of uh, as an echo of serverless. So I say after serverless and no code, we have configless and no conf, like where you have no configuration file. And I'm joking a little bit, uh, but back when I was running dot cloud, which was the ancestor of Docker. Um, on the front of our platform, uh, we had a pretty big load balancer, uh, which was based on Nginx precisely. And we were generating a configuration file. We were generating a configuration file that was up to 50, 100 megabytes. Uh, I don't even know how many lines that was in there, um, probably about 1 million lines. Um, so for me, it's a big deal that we move away from huge config files and towards things that get all the information they need from an API. Uh, that's one of the things that got me really excited when traffic came out. I, I don't have the exact date, but I remember already back in 2016, something like that, uh, when I say, okay, you mean I don't need to write config files, I'm just going to put like one, you know, like go, go talk to my Docker API or later my Kubernetes API and that's it. And for me, that's, that's, the, that's the pretty big deal. That's, that's where we need to go. Uh, all right. Um, so conclusion, and then I'm going to uh, answer a few more questions that came up. Uh, so I showed how to obtain TLS turns automatically. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you, like from, from the polls, I see like half of you already knew how to obtain certificates automatically. And honestly, I, I think there was probably a good chunk of you already built something like that. So I kind of wonder uh, why you came up. Is, is it to, you know, like to wonder how I would talk about this or whatever, but I'm, I'm still very um, flattered that you decided to uh, come and see this nevertheless, nonetheless. Um, so we saw how to obtain TLS search by combining all, all these things. Um, this also will deal with renewals, by the way. And I think that's one of the questions that was uh, asked um, in, in the Zoom chat. So yeah, this will automatically renew certificates. Um, the certificates and keys are stored as normal Kubernetes secrets, uh, which means that after that, you can do whatever you want with them. Like here, we're using them with traffic and ingress, but you could use that in whatever internal TLS thing you want. Uh, and all these components, uh, again, uh, can move independently from the other ones. And I think that's a pretty big deal. Uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to show today. Uh, let me now open the floor for questions. Um, so I see one thing about so far development. I've been using small steps, small step CA containers, preventing me from hitting the limits of Let's Encrypt. Uh, I'm not sure if I get the question in there. Um, one little thing, like a couple of things I would like to add here um, for my demos, you've seen like I, I was using these uh, .fun domains. Um, if you want to experiment with Let's Encrypt, 
I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you get a domain name uh, because, well, first you need a domain name anyway at some point, right? Um, but Let's Encrypt has um, a quota, which I think is 50 certificates per week, like on a, on a seven days rolling window. Um, and so what I do for that kind of, uh, of demo, uh, I get super cheap domains, you know, like .fun is like three bucks a year, I think. Um, and so I, I just get that, map that to my cluster and I, I do my, my demo with that. And so for instance, now, you know, like I, I, I told you in the beginning, I don't even remember if I mentioned it, but I do like Docker and Kubernetes training. And so now when we do training, we just give one domain name to each student so that when we do that kind of thing, we can do it without hitting Let's Encrypt uh, limitations. Um, so let's see, uh, I think I answered that one. Uh, would that work um, using the traffic CRD? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I did not even mention that uh, because here I wanted to remain, you know, very generic, very open, but traffic can use Kubernetes ingress. It can also use like its own kind of custom, you know, kind of custom traffic ingress. Um, and that opens a lot of really interesting features. Here, I, you know, like deliberately not used that uh, because I wanted to make the point that every component can be uh, replaced by another one. And so, of course, if we start using something custom in, in traffic, then we can't um, switch it with something else. Uh, will cert manager still work in case we want to do a TLS termination on a load balancer level? Ah, excellent question. Um, and then the answer is kind of, but basically if, if we want to use Cert Manager with um, like an, ex an external TLS thing, we will need another configuration thing there. Uh, in that case, that would be a very different demo. Like for instance, let's say I'm using some, let's say I deploy on some public cloud and I'm using their load balancer, then I will need to, I will, I will need to somehow um, find a way to synchronize back that TLS secret, like back up to that load balancer, um, which in some cases might happen automatically. It kind of depends on, on the cloud that I'm using, uh, but some of them might, you know, like, uh, um, I'm going to try to not make too long of a sidebar here, but when we run Kubernetes on a public cloud, we're going to generally run the cloud controller manager, the CCM, and that's the thing that's going to communicate with uh, load balancers and you know, like elastic block devices and things like that. And so this is going to be um, a cloud per cloud thing. On some clouds, it, it might be able to recognize, oh, okay, you want that certificate to be on that TLS termination. So I'm going to sync up the, the Kubernetes secret that, secrets that you have done here up to that load balancer. On some clouds, it might absolutely not handle it. So it, it depends. Um, okay. Uh, how to tackle uh, how to tackle rate limit in Let's Encrypt? Um, so yeah, that that's the thing I was mentioning earlier. I'm using these little domains for that. Um, I would say if you if you need more than fifty certificates per week, then I would switch to wildcard certificates and to DNS one challenges. Um, it's it's not too complicated. Here I, I'm using the HTTP one because it's kind of uh, easier to see the um, HTTP request coming in and all that stuff. But um, you can absolutely uh, switch to, uh, um, to to the to the DNS one if you have lots of uh, certificates. Um, okay, so. Uh, did I ever hit the limit? Uh, not with my own custom domains. Now, you, um, maybe you heard about something called nip.io. Um, this is great when you want to do like uh, quick tests. 
uh, with a domain name because you can put whatever you want, dot an IP address, uh, dot nip.io, and it's going to resolve to that IP address. So if you want to do a quick test, you could use that for your certificates, uh, but that then you would likely run into the rate limit because you would share the rate limit with everyone else using nip.io. And yeah, that, that's typically like when we do a training or a workshop and we tell everyone, okay, get your certificate. If we are all using nip.io, we immediately run into the limit. So that's why I was mentioning like when we do that, we get like these little dot fun domains because they're like three bucks and everybody gets their domain and, and then we don't have uh, limit problems. Uh, more questions. So if we have several services that expose apps, uh, should we each have a certificate uh, and put them at ingress? Um, so as always, the answer is it depends. <laughs> uh, but I would say if you, if you have a domain name in any way, you know, like everything for that domain goes to that Kubernetes cluster or everything goes to your infrastructure, maybe it would be a good idea to get a wildcard certificate so that you have like one certificate once for all and you're good and it's easy. Now, if you have a domain name and you, you, you know, you have some, some, um, some names that map to your Kubernetes cluster, some stuff that goes somewhere else, et cetera, then yeah, for each application, for each domain, we would get uh, its own certificate because that would be the only solution. Um, so I did answer that one. Is MTLS supported in traffic? Uh, yeah, so traffic also has a bunch of things like for service mesh users and lovers. Uh, there is traffic mesh. There is, I think, something called traffic connect. I'm going to confess that I'm way less familiar with that side of the court, um, but um, there there is support there for MTLS and uh, and other things like that. So. Um, Next question, if I understand correctly, you prefer cert manager plus traffic instead of traffic uh, because of the decoupling. Exactly, yeah. I like to put cert manager in the equation because yes, it's it's an extra component. Yep, I totally acknowledge, you, you know, we kind of increase the, increase the complexity because we have one more thing. Um, but I like that because it gives me some decoupling and some separation. Uh, so that's 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 why I like it. How to handle multiple ingress controllers with the same cert manager and let's encrypt. So the beautiful thing is that here, if I had multiple ingress controllers, you know, let, let's say I have traffic, but I also have the you know the Nginx ingress controller, etc. Uh, everything would work pretty neatly because they, they would just all get that TLS cert and, and use it as long as the ingress controller is kind of uh, respecting the, the law. And by the law, I mean like the, you know, like the, the spec that says this is where you get the TLS key insert. As long as it follows that, then you're good. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's absolutely possible to run two ingress controllers side by side with that. And that's actually another of the advantages of that technique, uh, because again, instead of having the keys and certs in traffic itself, they are now in Kubernetes, meaning that the other uh, uh, ingress controllers can use them. Uh, would using DNS challenge and traffic with a daemon set work if we don't care about the decoupling? Um, kind of, I mean, in that case, we would need to add um, something to deal with the DNS challenge. Um, here, the HTTP challenge is done by the ingress. So that's why it's nice. We don't need to add an extra component. Um, if we want to do a DNS challenge, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't done that yet with Cert Manager. I know it can do it, but I never really looked into the details, uh, so I don't know exactly what it would look like. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it, if, at the end, it would be the same, um, the same thing. 
Uh, okay, I think I got almost all questions, hopefully. Um, I, I've got that one. And oh, uh, I missed a, a very earlier question. Does client key have some TTL in the cube config? Um, so when I was showing uh, this cube config file, um, there is a TTL, well, there is a validity for the certificate here, uh, but not for the key itself. The, the, the key can be valid forever if we want to. All right. Uh, and I think I got that one. And that's it. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, yeah. Patricia, do you want to say some final words? <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you to everyone for attending. It's been a great, great session. And thanks for all of your questions. And thanks to you, Jerome. I think we all, according to the chat box, really appreciate all of the, of the knowledge you dropped. So thanks so much. And as I mentioned in the chat box, um, I will be producing this today and tomorrow and then emailing out the recording. And then it'll be on, on uh, social media as well and on YouTube. And OK, great talk, Jerome. Kudos to you. Kudos to everyone coming here to get educated. And we will see you at future events and, and to every, anywhere else that I am and you are. So thank you so much, everyone. Take good care and stay cool. OK, bye, Jerome. See you later. Bye. Thank you.